Good day! Let's move on from permutations and combinations papuntang Pascal's triangle. Later, we'll see bakit tayo nagsimula sa combinations at ano yung relevance niya sa Pascal's triangle. And in fact, they're very, very connected. Let's start by recalling, ano nga ba yung Pascal's triangle? If I'm not mistaken, this should have been introduced nung grade 7 kayo, or maybe even earlier. So we'll start with 1. And imagine may zero dun sa left and right side niya. And yung next level ng Pascal's triangle, na generate siya by adding the consecutive terms of yung current level natin. So 0 plus 1, that will give us 1. 1 plus 0, that will give us 1. So that generates the second level of our Pascal's triangle. So imagine may zero dito, may zero dito, para hindi na natin susulat. So magkakaroon tayo ng 0 plus 1, 1. 1 plus 1, 2. 1 plus 0, 1. Yung next level natin, magkakaroon tayo dito ng 3 and 3 from 1 plus 2 and 2 plus 1. Then, magkalagay lang tayo ng 1 sa magkabilang dulo. Kasi imagine may 0 dito at may 0 dito. And so on. And that generates our Pascal's triangle. At first glance, para na siyang exercise in addition na bibigay natin sa bata para matuto mag-add. However, medyo malalim yung mathematics na mahuhugot natin from the Pascal's triangle. And this lesson is intended to give us a few of the patterns na makikita natin sa Pascal's Triangle to give us a hint kung kano kalalim yung mathematics na mahuhugot natin from simple adding two numbers, pababa ng pababa, to get to the next row. Now we know that the Pascal's Triangle is named after uh, Blaise Pascal. He's a Frenchman and he was living around 1654 na medyo madaya na sa kanya nakapangalan yung Pascal's Triangle. Kasi almost a hundred years before Blaise Pascal, so, yan, 1654, 1556, naisulat na ni Nicolo Fontana Tartaglia sa isang librong uh, General Tratado de Numeri et Misur, parang General Treatise on Numbers and Measurement ng 1556, something resembling the Pascal's Triangle. I don't know kung nakikita natin dito, pero you have 2, 3, and 3, 4, 6, 4, tapos may arrows to indicate the addition. So this is 100 years before Pascal. Na isulat na, na iprint na yung Pascal's Triangle. So medyo madaya, no? Na sa kanya siya na, na ipangalan. Considering na ang dami-daming na-invent ni Pascal at marami pa siyang binigan ng pangalan niya. Like yung unit natin na measurement for pressure. And it's not even Tartalia, yung original na naka-discover at naka-publish ng Pascal's Triangle. A pet of Sapianus, I would say he's a German, pero wala pang Germany na bansa noong 1527. So he's in one of the he's one of the states that will become part of future Germany. May pinablish na siyang book na Kaufmann's Rechnung, I don't, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, noong 1527, na sa cover niya, may illustration na noong Pascal's Triangle. Although in the case of Apianus, parang mga 30 years lang naman siya na una kay Fontana. And again, it's not even the earliest. Have to look eastwards, puntang China, to see earlier renditions ng Pascal's Triangle. You have Yang Hui, who is a Chinese mathematician. Medyo duda na ako sa picture nito kasi mukha siyang generic na Chinese na scientist. Yang Hui was cited in a book by Chu Shishie. Ang pangalan ng book ay Precious Mirror of the Four Elements. This was around 1303. May illustration of something that is exactly similar sa Pascal's Triangle. 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 1 3, 3, 1, and so on. Pinipredate niya si Pascal by 400 years. As far as I understand, ito yung earliest na printed na reference sa Pascal's Triangle. As early as 1100s or mga 1000, noon na itong triangle na to sa Iran, formerly Persia. And they called it, uh, they called it Kayam's Triangle after Omar Kayam. And supposedly, sa Indian text, na-discover na rin daw to ng Indian mathematicians even before the year 1000. But since hindi siya na-document, ito yata yung earliest na printed document for it. Ito yung may illustration na ho. And even then, it's still named after Blaise Pascal. Na sobrang late to the game na dumating. And that he was able to get naming rights sa mathematical concept na to. So let's dig na dun sa math concepts behind the Pascal's triangle. Let's recall yung combinations natin. And choosing R, this gives us the number of ways to group R objects from N possible choices. And ang formula natin sa kanya ay N factorial over R factorial, N minus R factorial. Also, we mentioned before that by definition, 0 factorial is equal to 1. Let's find some meaning 
sa combinations, specifically sa n choosing n at sa n choosing 0. Si n choosing n, how many groups of n objects can you make with n objects? Gagamitin ko lahat ng objects ko dun sa set. So that gives me just one combination. Kung gagamitin mo lahat ng objects sa set, edi eh isang combination lang ang bubuo mo. And if we apply the formula, it will be n factorial over n factorial, n minus n factorial. Edi eh syempre ito magzi-zero. Kaya kailangan natin yung zero factorial equals one. So we'll just have one combination if we'll use all objects. And choosing zero, ang, ang tanong naman ito is how many empty groups or how many groups of zero can you make with n objects? Di logically isa lang, isang group na walang laman yung mabubuo mo kasi wala hang gagamitin eh. And if we use the formula for combinations that will be n factorial, r factorial but r is zero, zero factorial, n minus zero factorial, so this will be n factorial over n factorial, magka-cancel sila, and you'll be left with one over zero factorial which is also equal to, to one. With that, balikan natin yung last thing that we established dun sa lesson natin on combinations. Yung tinawag kong Pascal's Triangle Rule. Na n plus 1 choosing r is equal to n choosing r minus 1 plus n choosing r. First, 0 choosing 0 is equal to 1. Parang wala kang pagpipilian, pero gagawa ako ng group na walang laman. Isa lang yung magagawa akong group. Then, 1 choosing 0, 2 choosing 0, 3 choosing 0. Lahat ito ay 1. Kasi meron akong n elements, pero gagawa lang ako ng empty group. Isang empty group lang pwede mong gawin. Ito naman sa right side, we have 1 choosing 1, 2 choosing 2, 3 choosing 3. Mayroon akong n elements, pero gagawa ako ng groups na n lang din yung laman. So, gagamitin ko silang lahat. Isang combination lang magagawa ko. So, these are all equal to 1. Looking at the numbers sa gitna ng sides ng triangle na to, what is 1 choosing 0, 1 choosing 1. So, n is 1, r is 1, r minus 1 is 0. Pag in natin sila, we'll get n plus 1 choosing r. Ito naman. Ang n natin ay 2, ang r natin ay 2. n is 2, r minus 1 is 1. Ang sum nila ay n plus 1. So, from 2 magiging 3, choosing r. So, magiging 2. Ito din. This, uh, the sum of these two equals this one, following the... The sum of these two equals this one, following the Pascal's triangle rule. And as we go down sa triangle natin, we'll see that 3 choosing 1, 3 plus 3 choosing 0 is equal to 4 choosing 1, 3 choosing 2 plus 3 choosing 1 is equal to 4 choosing 2 by this rule. At maja-generate natin yung Pascal's triangle. Kaya siya Pascal's triangle rule kasi if we start with the edges at in, nagsimula tayong mag-add from 1 choosing 0, 1 choosing 1, yung makuha nating mga sums nila ay results na ng combinations. Kahit hindi ko pa alam kung ano yung values na yan based on this rule, which will lock the values of the Pascal's triangle as the number of ways to arrange R objects out of N, where N is yung row na binibigay, and R will be, parang will give you yung position dun sa, sa row, except that R equals zero dun sa first position. So that restricts yung values mo sa Pascal's triangle as results ng combination computations. Now, let's take a look at some patterns na makikita natin sa Pascal's triangle, starting with the most basic, yung symmetry. You could see that if we draw a line sa gitna, yung values sa left side, yung values sa right side ng triangle natin, pareho. Sa so, ano ulit alam natin sa symmetry, if you fold it along the middle, magko-correspond yung values na magkakapareho. Now, since we know that behind the Pascal's triangle is the concept of combinations, maybe we could use that to see kung bakit may sense na symmetric ang Pascal's triangle. Let's take a look at n equals 6 or the 6th row. At yung corresponding, and yung corresponding row niya dun sa Pascal's triangle na ang ginagamit natin ay combinations, hindi yung actual na values. This is the 6th row. Tignan natin si third element, 6 choosing 2. Nagko-correspond siya kay 6 choosing 4 by symmetry kung fold natin siya sa gitna. What is 6 choosing 2? This is 6 factorial over 2 factorial times 6 minus 2 factorial. What is 6 choosing 4? This is 6 factorial over 4 factorial times 6 minus 4 quantity factorial. So yung 6 minus 2 dito, pareho lang siya sa 4 dito. At yung 6 minus 4 dito, pareho lang siya sa 2 dito. So, mathematically, by the formula, pareho lang sila. 
Now, again, if we think of this as combinations, para kang may six objects na pagpipilian, tapos pipili ako ng dalawa. How many ways can I choose two objects out of six? But every time na pipili kang dalawa, meron kang apat na naiiwan. And yung apat na yon, kung ilang ways ka makakapag-iwan ng apat, ganun din yung ways na makakakuha ka ng dalawa. Or vice versa. Kung ilan yung ways na makakuha ka ng apat, ganun din yung number of ways na makakapag-iwan ka ng dalawa. And with that, hopefully, may sense kung bakit may symmetry yung Pascal's Triangle. Both sa formulas ng combinations at dun sa logic na ano ba yung nangyayari if you're choosing two, may naiiwang apat. If you're choosing four, may naiiwang dalawa. And if you're choosing r, may naiiwang n minus r which would be the same if you're choosing n minus r in the first place, may, may may iwang r. Second pattern that you could observe sa Pascal's Triangle, if you add all the values in a row, yung horizontal sums niya, so syempre 1 yan, that's equal to 1, 1 plus 1 equals 2, 1 plus 2 plus 1 equals 4, you will observe that the sums are all powers of 2. In fact, yung power niya is magkakorespond dun sa n, if we count this as n equals 0 which is the same end dun sa end choosing R na levels ng ating Pascal's triangle. Now, we could say, oh, wow, it's a pattern, or we could try to understand why that pattern exists. Let's take a look at the fifth row. At n equals 5, yung entries ng Pascal's triangle natin ay 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1, which would correspond dun sa 5 choosing 0, 5 choosing 1, all the way to 5 choosing 5. And let's try to interpret it in that sense, yung... yung Meron kang 5, tapos pipili ka ng, ng R, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. We'll do that by considering binary numbers na may 5 digit. So, syempre, binary numbers may place value. May order yung bawat bit dun sa ating binary number. 5 choosing 1 could interpret this as how many binary numbers can have 1 digit that is 1. Parang kukuha ko out of the 5 possible places at yun yung gagawin kong 1. Ito yung numbers na may isang digit na 1. 5 choosing 1 is 5. And these are those 5 numbers. 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and so on. Hanggang 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. And they all correspond to these decimal representations. 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. Using symmetry, ilang numbers naman. Yung may isang digit lang na 0. Yun yung ating 5 choosing 4. Na apat na 1, isang 0. Lima lang din. What is 5 choosing 3? Uh, yun naman yung established natin. 5 choosing 3, how many binary digits have 3, digi have three digits? That is 1. You should have 10. Ito yung 10 binary numbers na may 3 digits na 1. Ito yung corresponding decimal values nila. And 5 choosing 5 is how many binary digits have 5 digits? That is 1. Isa lang yun. Yung 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So ano yung mga hindi natin kinout? 5 choosing 0, how many binary numbers have digits na have no digits na 1? Eli yung 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, which is 0. Yung 5 choosing 2, ilan yung may 2 digits na 1? Yung 5 choosing 4, ilan yung may 4 digits na 1? But that will just cover all the binary representations from 0, na 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 to 31, which is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So there are 32 binary numbers na makakapture natin with these 5 bits. So by thinking of n as yung parang bits ng isang binary number, you're like asking how many binary numbers can I generate with 5 digits, with 5 bits? That's 2 to the 5. Or when you have n bits, that's 2 to the n. So that is the reason kung bakit yung sum, yung horizontal sums natin ng row entries ng Pascal's triangle, they add up to powers of 2. Kasi you can relate it to taking combinations of yung place values at ilan dun yung gagawin mo 1, gagawin mo 2. So from wala kang gagawin 1 to lahat gagawin mo 1. Ma-encompass mo yung 2 to the n na numbers corresponding to the binary representations of those numbers. Having noticed na medyo mahaba yung discussion on the pattern sa Pascal's triangle, I decided to cut muna yung lesson at this point and move the second half of the discussion lesson to another video. Hopefully, that makes the lessons more bite-sized so you could take a break here and kain muna kayo then proceed tayo dun sa continuation ng patterns natin on Pascal's Triangle on the next video. So, goodbye for now and I'll see you sa continuation ng lesson na to.